Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So I got another filament dryer that's on my short list of dryers that I wanted to review. Uh, this one is the Creality Space Pi filament dryer. It's for a single spool of filament. Uh, we're gonna go through a quick unboxing and then cover some of the features and my initial impression. And then once I get one or two more, I'm gonna do a video covering uh, like a review between the three or four that I have. Um, I say three or four because I might end up just doing one more and doing three, uh, but there are two more that I'm looking at. But with that said, this is gonna be a pretty short video uh, because this is a pretty simple unit. It does what it's supposed to do, um, and that's pretty much it. So we'll talk about that and um, the results I was able to get uh, after we go through the unboxing and just go through some of the configuration items. All right, guys, so here's the Creality Space Pi filament dryer. Let's go ahead and unbox it, see what all it comes with. Just set in the box back here. We got our power cable that came out uh, when we took this out of the box. It does seem to be pretty nicely packaged, foam around everything and fit it to the actual device itself. Uh, contents are uh, pretty straightforward. Like I said, the power cable, we got a piece of tubing and of course the dryer itself. And then inside of the dryer here, we have the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. And go ahead and just take this plastic coating off. All right, so without powering it on here, it's just a couple things I wanted to show you just from my first impressions. I like how this opens, it's kind of cool. Uh, inside, uh, you've got the um, bearings that the filament sits on, and this is gonna be for your standard one kilogram uh, spool. So just sitting there like this and turn, so it turns pretty evenly. Uh, there's a vent back here. Uh, it does say caution hot because it is a heater. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the instructions, see if there's anything worth mentioning there. Um, and then power it on and I'll show you some of the features in the front here. And also it has the one location for the uh, actual filament to come out, which is up top. And you can plug it when not in use if you're just drying it. And then the, your tube will run here and over to your printer. Right. And then I um, wanted to turn this around a little bit more. So like I said, you got this vent here. And then you also have the one up front and this one here. Uh, That's where the heat is actually coming from. It looks like it works by uh, just blowing the heat around in circles here because uh, you got the vent up here, uh, heating elements down here. And when this is closed, it's just creating a loop. Uh, so it's going to uh, heat everything up, uh, hit the outside of the filament more, and then uh, help dry everything out. All right, so let's go ahead and power this on and take a look to see what it has on the front. In the back, there's an actual power switch. Go ahead and turn that on. And then up front, it gives you an actual power button. So if you want to leave that on, you can actually turn the unit on or off from the front. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit. All right, so we've got our standard settings here. So we've got the current inside temperature, current humidity, uh, the temperature set based on the material, and our timers. Let's go into settings first. All right, so the first option when you go into settings is your uh, material. So we go into settings, then you can browse PLA and it sets your temperature that it would need to uh, go for. And then your different types of filament in here. So I think most of the time it's going to be PLA that's used. Uh, but again, it has options for all of it. And then the duration you want to actually run the filament dryer for. You'll probably have to play around, see what actually works, You'll see what the humidity level ends up being. Uh, for PLA, I'll probably start with two hours and then add two hours every time. Then from there, if you hit it again, you go up to your uh, temp or your current readings, um, which I want to change that from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Then if you go to the next one, you can change your temperature. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all your settings. I will say that the touch screen is a little bit weird. It Sometimes it recognizes me touching it, sometimes it doesn't. It seems to be a little bit sensitive, but everything you need is on it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start this to see uh, what it sounds like from temperature wise. I'm just gonna throw a roll of filament in. All 
Might as well put that filament in there, close it, it's just PLA, and go ahead and go down to timer. Um, so when you're actually adjusting this, you wanna leave your finger on it for a second. It's not just a quick touch. Uh, but so like I said, start with about two hours, uh, see where that goes. Um, but once you get used to working with the touchpad, it did get easier. Just in at first, I expected just to like touch like you would a phone and it kind of goes with it, um, but you have to kind of touch and hold. Um, not an issue, just more something to be aware of. Uh, overall though, it does seem pretty quiet. Um, it's actually not really making much noise at all. I was just giving it a couple minutes to see if we got any louder. So I would say that if you have this in a room where you're working or on a computer or doing something else, it's not going to interfere with what you're doing. It's not loud at all. Uh, so I will give it props for that. And the one last thing I wanted to point out on this is in the instructions on the back, uh, there is a reference guide for what they're saying. Uh, the different temperature and time is for the different filaments. I would keep this as a good solid starting point. You might want to check some guides online to see if they have uh, different recommendations, uh, but at least they do give you a good starting point for your different filaments. Uh, so that's good overall. Uh, that said, I kind of wish that when you selected one of the uh, filament types that it automatically put the recommendation in for the time and the temperature. Uh, that would be a nice feature that they could add. And then lastly, I wanted to uh, talk about the cost a little bit. I think at the time of this video, depending upon the source you get it from, it's about $65 for this unit, uh, which is, I think, reasonable. Uh, it's not overpriced for what it is. You can spend uh, $40, $50 on just a filament uh, box or storage box uh, for a couple rolls that doesn't have the heating elements. So being able to actually dry the filament out instead of just storing it uh, makes it worth the extra cost there. Uh, so if you don't have a filament dryer, I do have videos covering like, is it actually worth it? Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, you can watch that video and kind of show you the difference. Uh, but it does reduce the stringing and improves the overall print quality for filament that's uh, been around for a little bit. So something that's not fresh out of a new packaging. And then uh, you can always run the filament out of here to your printer. Like I said, just putting the tube in here and just running it to your printer. It just gives you the one output location, uh, which should be fine for most scenarios, uh, but it could be potentially limiting for a couple. But based on the design, I see it, there's really only the one option because the back uh, has that venting system where it's circulating the air. Um, but overall, it's a solid unit. Um, I like how it is designed. I like how it looks. Uh, the price is reasonable and uh, it's going to do the job just fine. And then lastly, I do have a couple of filament dryers now, so I'll get like one or two more and then do a video kind of comparing them to give you my thoughts between them. Um, just so you, if you are in the market, you have a couple options to look at. Um, there are probably four-ish that I would consider if I was purchasing one right now. I have two of those four, uh, so I want to get at least one more of those uh, so I can do a comparison and give you a solid recommendation. Uh, but if you're looking to buy now, this is not a bad option. All right, so that covered the unboxing and just going through some of the menu items. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and give you some of my feedback now. So overall, I thought this device is pretty straightforward. It's slick looking, it's nice, it does what it's supposed to. A couple things that I wasn't a huge fan of is it only has one uh, actual tube port if you're trying to actually run it as a dry box or dry it as you're using it. And the touch screen was a little bit different. So it wasn't as responsive as I would have expected it to be. Uh, neither one of those are a huge thing at the price point. I think it is a great box, assuming you only need to dry one roll of filament. Uh, but yeah, it does a great job. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, in the four hours, it was able to get down into the low 20s as far as humidity and then um, keep relatively decent humidity levels uh, after about 24 hours later. So I think after 24 hours is around 44. 
which is about where I would expect it to stay uh, unless you opened it up. But overall, this thing does do what it's advertised to do. It dries the filament, it brings the humidity down, and uh, you can run it as both a dryer and a dry box. Uh, the only thing that would be nice is if you were using it as a dry box, if it had a spot to put some silica gel. Um, but either way, I don't think it'd make a huge difference because you could just kick on the heater for like a half hour just to bring it down a little bit if it starts to get uh, outside of whatever range you're looking for. If you have any questions about what I covered here or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.